Uh, sure. As we wait for the Fed, we have some committee moves to tell you about. Weiss, we're going to toss it over to you. It's, it's your time now, Weiss. It's your time. Uh, you just bought Joe, more. Joe, could you get me lunch? You just bought more. <laughs> Nvidia. Well, ignore it, Joe. Ignore it. We just bought some more Nvidia. Uh, you know, people calling this one of the biggest momentum trades of all time. What made you buy here? Well. Um, I bought it here because of the momentum. Uh, I mean, I owned enough of it. Uh, I just thought that as soon as the number hit the tape, uh, the stock is extremely liquid. It traded more than 10 million shares pre-market. So it was a good opportunity to get some exposure on a trading basis, coupled with fundamentals that I think are exceptionally strong. Um, so it's uh, so from that standpoint, it was sort of a, an easy one to get into. Easy though, because you're just highlighting the multiple expansion in the market. I mean, Nvidia's multiples actually declined, but still trading at just about 47 times forward PE. So that's easy for you to buy into. Uh, yeah, for the for the trading part of it is it's absolutely easy to buy into because the catalysts were there. The catalyst being that the market was going to go higher today. So immediately on the number, right, the futures and you know the pre-market traded up. I think I bought Nvidia only up a buck a share. So I'm not getting rid of my other position, which is not one of my largest positions because I've never been comfortable with the valuation, even though it's not excessive when you look at the growth. But I just thought it was an opportunity to get advantage of the queues had already moved nicely. Everything else had moved nicely except for ASL and this. And then they they too moved. So, so Joe, I see you over here shaking your head, but worried at all about concentration risk. Actually, Apollo's Torsten Slock out with a note today talking about extreme concentration and returns in the S&P. Basically, I'm going to boil it down. Again, everybody can read it home, but basically just saying if Nvidia starts to decline, then S&P is just going to be hit hard. Frank, I run an equal weighted strategy. The uh, the distance between the equal weighted performance and the performance of the S&P 500 has not been this wide in nearly 30 years. So look, I'm OK with that. I understand it. I've been doing this a long time. It's part of the cyclical nature of the business itself. But you have to respect right now the performance of NVIDIA, of Apple, of these mega cap companies. They're leading the charge higher within the marketplace. We all understand the fundamental yeah. reasons why. But I'll tell you what, Steve's buying today. The reason that you're seeing the advance today in NVIDIA and Apple is because the market is dominated by algorithms. And on a day like today, the algorithms are pivoting in the direction of these companies, which have shown the very strong performance. Apple, by the way, is now back to being the largest market cap. I think it's at 3.34 trillion. NVIDIA has to step it up. It's fallen into third place. <laughs> but again, it goes back to what I said at the beginning of the show. Trends are a very powerful variable within the market, and you don't want to fight the trend. I've often said if you're looking to be a seller in the marketplace, you want to do it when the market rolls over and gives you the evidence that it's beginning to do so. There's no clear evidence to that NVIDIA and Apple are representation. Wait, I, wanna, I, I want to come over you, to Anastasia. Let, let me just give, give you one second, Wise, One second. Over to yeah, Anastasia. Yeah. Uh, so you, you, you kind of, your ears perked up. I saw you kind of look up when we were talking about concentration risk. Yeah, I, I wanted to chime in on that because, I mean, obviously the market is very much contingent upon what NVIDIA does, what big tech does, but not only so at this moment. And by the way, you know, going to last NVIDIA earnings, my thought was, you know, it would be nice if they delivered, but if they don't, we're still going to be okay. And the reason I say that is there's just a lot of broadening that is happening around the world right now within the equity markets in the U.S. and elsewhere. And so, for example, one broadening that I'm watching, it's not just the U.S. consumer-driven economy, but also the manufacturing side of it that's picking up. It's happening in the United States. It's happening in Europe, in China, Korea, Taiwan, and more. So I like that cyclical momentum. You know, I also like, for example, that it's not just the U.S. economy, but it's the European economy that's also doing better. We're out of the technical recession. We have the ECB rate cuts. So that's another cyclical momentum. And then to kind of circle back all the way to NVIDIA, you know, it's not just NVIDIA that is participating in the semiconductor upside cycle, for example. Uh, it's other players in the data center space, but it's also some of the, um, you know, PC semiconductors and some of the memory and some of the storage. So uh, I think that one stock is important, but there's a lot of other things that can support the market at this point. Okay.